So, good afternoon and welcome to our class in ATC 111, Crop and Animal Improvement. So, we are done with Mujo 2. Last time we talked about um, DNA sequencing and copying. So, I got here a video, of, a recorded video of our last meeting. And since last time was a holiday, so we missed the class. Uh, but in continuation, we are now going to start with module three or animal DNA production uh, extraction. So while waiting for you to come in, uh, in case you can, but if not, just always watch for the posted videos like the, the ones that we had last time. So it's been a long time and I hope you're going to answer all your um deadlines requirements you know, um which are which are already due by um i think by end of may you know so due today is module five and uh squeeze and lab exercise five but then we are really we are really very late since we we had a lot of missed classes due to holidays so i uh, i hope you are actually um answering and studying in advance in module four three four and five and six although these are just very short topics compared to the first modules for second module so so to start with we're going to have the animal dna extraction so for the DNA isolation, okay, so we have talked this um, before on DNA isolation. So although um, isolation of DNA between plants and animals are, are almost the same, but then uh, we have to again specify a specific topic for uh, a particular um, type of cell, no, whether animal or, or plant cell. So again, to um, to to define DNA isolation, it is a process of DNA purification from sample using a combination of physical and chemical methods. So. I hope you have done this method already with plants, but we're not going to do this with animals, no? So we will just anyway have a lecture on this. So the first isolation of DNA was actually done in 1869 by Friedrich Mischer. And the methods used to isolate DNA are dependent on the, depend on source, age, and size of the sample. But generally, they aim to separate the DNA present in the nucleus of the cell from other cellular components. So the isolation of DNA is needed for genetic analysis, which is because this is for animals. So mostly are used for scientific, medical, or forensic purposes. So scientists use actually DNA in a number of applications such as the introduction of the DNA to the cells and animals of plants for diagnostic purposes. Like for instance, in medicine, no, the later application is the most common in medicine. So uh, other, on other hand, the mind, uh, we also, in forensic science, also needs to recover DNA for identification of individuals. For example, yung mga criminals natin, like rapists, petty thieves, accident or war victims, or if you want to know if you, who's really the father, you know, paternity determination, and plant or animal identification. So we use this DNA purification and application. So we all know uh, from the previous studies that we have, we still remember the presence of proteins, lipids, polysaccharides, and some other organic or inorganic compounds in the DNA preparation will always interfere with the DNA analysis and methods. So, and in fact, they will reduce the quality of DNA 
leading to a very shorter storage life. So it's very important that you have a very uh, a good quality DNA for storage. You no, know, whatever you uh, you need to use this DNA. So uh, the DNA isolation can be uh, its sources can be very diverse. Basically, it can be isolated from any living or a dead organism. No, so high, high L. So actually, I just have started about DNA isolation in animals. So I am defining now uh, what are the uh, lay. Uh, these are the previous topic that we have. No, the the DNA isolation introduction and um sources so we are now on sources hi Maika. so in continuation i have just started na kasi it's two o'clock already so let's start now so we are now talking about dna i animal dna isolation so i just have to reiterate to you although we have discussed about i uh, dna isolation and purification already in 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 plants pero in animals naman um although basically all the general procedures are just the same but uh, there's still difference now and we will talk about differences on um later you know on the next after this slide so to continue um Basically, kanina we just have we just have talked about na ang gamit ng mga ng DNA application is in medicine, no, and also in forensic science. You mag-identify tayo ng mga person involved in crimes or even paternity kung sino pa father or even mother, no, and and plant and animal identification as well. So. The sources of, of DNA could include some, for, for in, we all know that for plants, no, we can have DNA from, um, from both, uh, from plant parts, no? So maybe last time you've used the tomato or yung kanin, sa ating examples before our strawberry. So basically it could be you can make use of the living or the dead organism, no? So, pwede pa, like, kung halimbawa nga yung namatay na, and then you want to investigate, so you can still take the DNA of the of the dead organism or person. So, uh, how, what are the common sources? This can be whole blood, hair, sper, hair or sperm. Then we can also have bones, nails, Tissues, blood, stains, saliva, or buccal cheek swabs, epithelial cells, urine, paper cards. These are all used for sample collection and even also bacteria, animal tissues, or plants. And then they are stored in uh, from the eye card tissue samples. They are frozen blood or tissue and exhumed bones or tissues than ancient human animal or plant samples no in fact um have you heard sasi can you hear me l sasi so um if you can uh if you can speak then you just speak anytime okay so so i would know that you are um that you are, you can hear me. So, if you have seen yung mga newly found mummies, no? May mga mummy somewhere in um, Egypt. Meron sila nakita mga mummy na meron pang dead body. So, you can still get sample from those, no? To identify their DNA or identification. No? Parang mga ganun. Or even... Uh, if, even if, halimbawa, accidentally, yung nasa mga North Pole and South Pole, no, they, were, they are already frozen, like animals or even, 
even yung tinatawag natin mga mga sinaunang mga mga animals so if they are bacteria so we can still we can still ano extract their dna to analyze them so we all know the bacteria are some of the oldest na ng mga organisms that that already um survive or live no in our in our in in, in earth or in our um environment so the isolation of dna has four major steps again the preparation and cell extract purification of dna and then concentration in dna samples and measurement of the purity of the concentration so we have done we already have discussed this before with plants now when you prepare but in the in in animal tissues or cells no to extract the dna uh, first, you prepare the cell extract, no? then they are separated from the cell membrane. And with the help of the extraction buffer, and we use chemicals such as the ethylene, diamine, tetraacetate, or ENTA, and they are going to remove the magnesium ions essential for the preservation of overall structure of the cell membrane. And also the SDS or sodium dodecyl sulfate, which also helps in disrupting the cell membranes by removing the lipids of the cell membranes and uh, using the buffer. Okay, so next we have um, lysis of the cell as the final step in the preparation of the cell extract and also removal of insoluble cell debris. So they are partially digested organelles and pelleted by centrifugation. So um, leaving the cell extracts reasonably clear supernatan. So have you done this? Uh, have you done um wallet na si Mike si Chris na po. So if you have done this before I'm sorry. Hello Chris. So if you have done already the exercise in um, DNA isolation, no, so you will see, no, the but we don't use these chemicals, um, because it's only for plants that we can use uh, the de detergent or homemade, uh, homemade na mga chemicals to extract it. Although it's not that as perfect, so. Some of you, like Mary Rose, have done it before. So she said it's diligent siya as in katong soap, uh, katong, um, katong murag sticky nga, ano, no? DNA pool, but it's still okay, no? So second is the purification of the DNA from cell extract. And um, in addition, to the cell extract it will which contain detergents proteins and reagents using the cell lysis or the the broken down of the cells and rna so there are also other procedures used and in, in in um in taking out the contaminants no to make the dna pure and this include ethanol precipitation phenyl chloroform extraction and many column purification. So if you're going to Google uh, or to search for this specific procedure, so it's all always available. No? And we have for, for, for ethanol precipitation lang naman, so you're just going to use ice cold ethanol or isopropanol. Since the DNA in these alcohols will aggregate together, giving making them an pellate, no? upon centrifugation and then precipitation occur in DNA increasing ionic strength and usually adding sodium acetate. So the next is the phenyl chloroform extraction. So of course using the phenyl chloroform uh, which denatures the proteins in the sample and after centrifugation you denature proteins stay in the organic phase while well, aqueous phase contain nucleic acids mixed with the chloroform that will remove phenyl residues from the solution. 
And we also have the mini column purification. Now that relies on the fact that the nucleic acids may bind or adsorb to the solid phase or silica, depending on the pH and the salt concentration of the buffer. So, and the, the third step is the concentration of DNA samples. So the most frequently used method of concentration is the ethanol precipitation. And in the presence of salt and temperature of negative 20 degrees Celsius or less, so mas, mas, mas bugno pa kayo, no? yung absolute ethanol will efficiently precipitate polymeric nucleic acids. With concentrated solution of DNA, we can use the glass rod to pull out the adhering DNA strands well for the new solution precipitated DNA can be collected by centrifugation or by dissolving in an appropriate volume of water. So, so this is now the final step, no? So again, to, to um, visualize all of it, so cells are lysed no, using detergent, yung mga kanina na mga chemicals, then cell contents are treated with Protease to destroy the uh, protein and RNAs to destroy the RNA. And yung cell debris in pelleted form in a centrifuge and the uh, supernatant liquid containing DNA of the transfer to the, is to the clean tube. And you have now this one, the DNA precipitated with ethanol. So it is supposedly ang DNA sample natin, yung spooled DNA in a glass run. So, how do you measure the purity of DNA concentration? So, they are uh, using they are accurately measured using absorbs, absorb, absorbance spectrometry, UV absorbance. No, so the amount of UV radiation absorbed by the solution of DNA is proportional directly to the amount of the DNA sample. So, usually absorbance is measured at 260 nanometer, no? so the wavelength, at this wavelength, it, there would be an absorbance of one corresponds to 50 microgram of the double-stranded DNA per ml. So if, if I, ano niyo mo siya sa UV niya, 260 nanometer, so if meron siyang one absorbance, so it means it has 50 microgram na and double-stranded DNA per ml. And the pure sample of DNA ratio of the absorbance is at 260 nanometer and 280 nanometer is 1.8 or 1 is to 8. And ratios less than this indicates that the preparation is contaminated either with protein or with phenol. So that is how you do the purification or uh, evaluating how uh, the quality of your DNA. So, less, um, kailangan mas mataas pa siya sa 1 is to 8, no? Para maging, to make sure that it's really purified. So, this is now a general figure on how you do the um, DNA extraction and purification of blood samples or even yeast or fungi, plants, animals and bacteria using uh, lysis, lysate or and uh, resin or or what do you call that um uh, proteins no yung mga yung mga enzymes rather and dna binding filter and you got the purified dna so that would be all for for this presentation, do you have any question, Micah? So, paputol putol si Micah now, so I understand. It's all right. And so, next we have why. So, if you have question, just butt in anytime, ha, when you, if you can speak. So, ano na ngayon ang difference na ating DNA plant and animal? No? So in terms of extraction. So generally, they are different no? because they are the same, but they are different. Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, Micah. Do you have any question regarding uh, animal DNA extraction? Yeah, so if you have a question, you just, um, but in any time, no? So as I just have said, gen general DNA extraction are just the same for both in anim animals and plants. So they just differ in terms of chemicals. And the more har harsher is the plant, since the plants have rigid cell wall, while animals don't have cell wall, but still need chemicals like the SDS, para ma-disrupt yung cell membrane, no? To release the genomic DNA. Pero, so, mas concentrated in terms of chemicals ang ating plant cells. So, we usually use um, the, the certain chemicals that have mentioned earlier. So, yun lang naman, no? And um, for plant, it's, it's more difficult for extraction, no? You have to add cellulase to degrade cellulose that uh, to break up the cell wall by homogenization and um since yung mga metabolites that could be present on it will interfere with the genomic dna quality through the yung uv spectrophotometry kanina and for animals someone we use the peripheral blood leukocytes and uh, it's still difficult because the blood must come directly from the animal and the blood contains strange compounds like proteins, lipids, white blood cells, and platelets, and so on that will also contaminate the DNA sample. So, however, a primary contaminant naman ng animal DNA extracted from the blood sample is called heme which is non-protein component ng hemoglobin. So, in terms of DNA, there's also differences, no? So, in terms of um, an animal, plant, plant and animal DNA lie in the sequence of bases in the helix. So, compounds found in the cells are absent in animal cells are, and DNA base sequences reflect this. So, also the genomic plant DNA is often larger than animal DNA and this difference is also affect extraction methods so the yield and the purity of the DNA so now we have known that there are differences so una uh, in sequence the sequence of bases in the helix uh, the, uh, there are compounds found in plants that are not in animals no like the plant cell wall and also the DNA base sequences. And alin na mas malaki? Is it the plant DNA or the animal DNA? Lira, can you speak now? Or Lizelle? So alin ang mas malaki ang plant or animal DNA? Or alin ang mas mahirap eh extract? Is it plant or animal DNA? So any of you can answer. How about Lizelle? So, I'm um, sorry, I cannot wait for you. Animal man. Yes. yes, Lira. Uh, sa animal man. Plant, ang um, more difficult is Sabi dito doon is um, they're both difficult but um, depending on the case, no? Like for animal, for plant, difficult siya in terms of cell wall. But for animal, difficult siya in terms of the blood, no? Which come directly from the animal. Kasi meron siyang him. Sana yun? It contains the contamination, no? It's called him, no? The main contaminant. At saka, mas malaki ang, ang um, mas malaki ang genome ng plant compared sa animal, of course. So, so do you have any questions or clarifications? 
regarding differences between animal and plant DNA. Any of you? So we just have discussed the process of animal DNA extraction. No? Since we still since we still have a lot of time, no, if you don't have a question, so we still have remaining more than 10 minutes of our of our time in um we of our time no so we will talk about cloning but i'm just gonna choose the that yeah the shorter version of cloning no? so so we have here so we are done i hope you don't have any more question about animal and plant dna extraction um differences so we're going to talk about cloning so ano naman ang cloning no so in a in a clo uh, when we say clone it's a member of a group of genetically identical cells no and these are produced by a sexual reproduction or in the process of mitosis you can see here on the figure the body cell taken from a sheep a and egg cell taken from a sheep b and the DNA are extracted and also the nucleus are removed are, are being cloned, no? So the DNA from sheep A fused with the egg cell from sheep B, they are fused cells developed into embryo, which is placed in the uterus of a foster mother. Now, ibig sabihin, like for, for, for humans, merong uh, parang foster mother. So the lamb is cloned in of ship A. So parang photocopy or true copy siya talaga ng lamb A. So what is cloning organism? So a body cell from one organism and egg cell from another are fused, resulting in cell division like a normal embryo. So they are exactly the same. No? They are exactly the same. So if you have you heard this before cloning dali anyone so if you have heard dali no actually patay na si dali at this time so we're going to talk about dali more on our so example lang siya ng clone the first cloned sheep no na animal so what is this human genome project? So this started in 1990. It's a research effort to sequence all of our DNA. So we have known that humans have 46 chromosomes and over 3.3 billion nucleotides mapping every gene location. So for, for, for humans, we have all the genes in our body mapped already. And these are conducted by scientists around the world. So the Human Genome Project insights are some of the following. No, only 2% of human genome codes for proteins, exons. And other 98% are introns and are non-codings. And only about 20,000 to 25,000 genes are expected of 100,000. So we call proteome the organism's complete set of protein. And about 8 million single nucleotide or polymorphisms places where human differ by a single nucleotide. And also about one half of genome comes from transposons or pieces of DNA that move up to different locations on chromosomes. So we barely understand all of this, but these are the insights or the result of the human genome project so ano naman ang benefits ng human genome project so because all of our genetic use are already mapped no so there should be improvements in medical prevention and disease gene therapies and diagnosis techniques so i'll give you more examples in the next slides no and the production of useful protein products for use in medicine and even in agriculture 
or bioremediation. So what is bioremediation? Yung um, you are going. It has benefit for 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 the environment, no? Yung like for example, yung mga plants that will absorb mga radioactive radioactive na chemicals or pollutants and for pharmaceutical industries and also improve bioinformatics using computers para ma help in DNA sequencing. So do you have any questions regarding human genome project and cloning concept? Anyone? Sorry, I'm in a hurry. So um Shall we continue for um, cloning, more on cloning? And then after this, we're going to discuss animal DNA sequencing on the next, on the next, on next week, no? And hopefully, although we are really very late, uh, we can, we can extend time before mag end yung semester natin and also find time to discuss some of this. Although, na una na yung inyong mga um, questions, I, I mean quizzes, no? So please feel free to answer your quizzes in advance. No, you can always Google or or check the class um, the class works, no, or the our Google Classroom for for the information. So these are ethical issues in animal cloning and human cloning. So I'll just be fast, no. So this is just a joke in this uh this is actually from Professor Shaw of the Department of Biochem, Hong Kong Bioethics Association, on uh, last reported in 2009. So uh, it means the Lamuna Libyan. So if you are a fan of Mr. Bean, a funny comedian, a French comedian, so Gimo Shang Mona Lisa. So, going back the history of cloning, actually in 1952 by Northern Leopard, uh, using Northern Leopard frogs, you know, they they first cloned frogs in 1952. Actually, cloning is a bit uh, on controversy path, so there's no actually um, specific publications on cloning since it's it still is a very critical issue in terms of ethical issues, no? In, in 1953, the structure of DNA was discovered. And uh, in 1978, Louis, uh, the first child conceived through in vitro fertilization was born. So it was in 1978 and it, he was the first child child na, na in vitro fertilized. But now it's very common. In 1993 naman, the human embryos were first cloned, no? artificial embryo twining. And July 5, 1996, sabi ko nga, Dali the sheep was born. So he was the first, she was the first mammal cloned using mature cell. So Dali the lamb in 1996 using nuclear transfer and at the Rusli Institute at UK with uh, the PPL Therapeutics. So another example of cloning is the Cumulina mouse in 1998 and by the University of Hawaii. The cattle in 1998 at Kinki University, Japan. We have um, pigs, no, named Mill, Krista, Alexis, and Carol, and dot, dot com, com in 2000 by the PPL Therapeutics of UK. And also we have Carbon Copy Cut in 2002 uh, from Texas A&M University, USA. And also we have Generation of Prometheia 2003 in a research laboratory at Italy. And we also have a donkey in 2004 from USA, clone dogs in 2005 at Korea, and rhesus monkey in 2007 at Oregon. 
So there are two methods of cloning. No, we have embryo and adult cell cloning. So of course, embryo, you remove the cell embryo for the developing into separate embryo. And for adult cell cloning naman, we just replace the DNA or nucleus from a cell by another. So in embryo cloning, you do not know the characteristic of the offspring yet. But in adult cell cloning, the characteristics are almost the same as the nucleus do donor so how to generate uh how did they generate dolly yung, yung first clone ship we have uh they used the other cells uh taken from donor ship and the cells were in culture to switch off their genes and become dormant and uh, the unfertilized egg cell was taken from another ship and the nucleus was you know leaving the egg empty not using petri dish and the cell egg without, so we have 10 minutes left. The cell without nucleus was fused with the donor cell using a pulse of electricity and the second cell pulse started in the cell division. So using electrification, um, divide yung cell. And after six days, the resulting embryo was implanted into the another ship or surrogate mother. So after gestation, the surrogate mother gave birth to Dali, which was identical to the other cell bone. So that's how they generate Dali. So ano yung advantages ng animal cloning? So we can produce animal with desired trait if we want for protein products or organs no? and prolif proliferate endangered animals like the dinosaur. So we, we believe that scientifically dinosaurs exist um, during the ice age, you know, thousands of years ago. So if we want to get it back or bring it back, so we can do using animal cloning. And but then cloning is until now under under controversy and um, ethics um, issues, no. So cloning endangered animal like Noah the boar, an endangered species in 2000, was done by the advance of technology in U.S. And also cloning of woolly mammal, which were actually extinct. Now it means it has been lost 10,000 years ago, actually. So <laughs> this was one of the projects done in 2003. And also cloning transgenic animal, like cloning cow containing mad cow disease resistant gene. So hindi na siya magka mad cow, no? In Shandong, China. And also technology complicated, like survival rate of clone embryo. Uh, these are concerns in animal cloning. The technology is still complicated until now. So we don't know actually if it's still is successful or ano ang side effects nito and also the survival rate of the clone embryos is very low so that's why so like for dali uh, it doesn't really last long overweighing of cows at birth and the breeders may want to keep their animal also unique so parang parang weird no and breeders may want to create better offspring so ito yung mga concerns so if better offspring Still, we are not sure of its side effects. And the health of the clones usually are poor development of the heart, lung, and immune system. So it hasn't been perfected yet. So although gusto mo magka-clone like kay Maika, no? That's very beautiful si Maika. Gusto niya kasing, kasing ganda talaga niya yung baby niya. So she wants some, maybe like for Maika, no? He, she wants to have a clone of her own. But in for Filipino tradition, we don't do that. And it, that is very expensive. So they might also have genetic disorder. That's one of the health disadvantages. So Dali gave birth to a female lamb actually in 1998, but Dali later died of premature aging. No, so premature aging. So mas Dali siya, uh, but he, uh, before sa lifespan niya, nag-age na siya. In 2003, namatay siya. So what happened to... Pero may nag-anak naman siya, no? 
And then company for cloning pets are are available now. Like the genetic savings and clone established in 2000, producing clone cat in 2001, and delivered the first commercially cloned cat, Little Nikki, called Little Nikki in 2004. And it's even worth 50,000 US dollars. So that is very expensive. And however, company closed in 2006. And a new company, Bio Arts International, was also established for cloning dogs. So um, that's why commercial pet cloning may not be a good investment. Kasi napakamahal talaga, no? And the demand is not high, no? It's not needed, actually. Competition from developing countries includes disregard ng mga intellectual property issues or relaxed treatment of animals. So the IP holder does not want defense to IP rights and that the outcome is very unpredictable. So cloning is not a mature technique yet until now and there are a lot of pressures from society. So even cloning human is unimaginable yet. Although sa mga movies, no, mga fictional movies or Sci-tech, sci uh, we have already seen a lot of movies doing cloned humans, no? And uh, there are two kinds of cloning, reproductive cloning and therapeutic cloning. So for reproductive, you use the embryo to create an implant into woman's womb to bring it in term. And uh, for therapeutic cloning, naman, an embryo is created in order to obtain cells from it. So... Uh, why do we need to clone human? So just it's unconventional means of reproduction. So many of us here who cannot bear child uh, can, can do the in vitro fertilization using surrogate mother and also adoption. And we can study human development, produce spare parts, spare parts ng heart, and so on. No? Test for genetic defect increased chance of pregnancy and produce two children at the same time if you want, you know, triplets or quadruplets. And also we'll pre preserve the traits and talents. Like if you want to be like um, Michael Jackson's you know, uh, talent, no, or singing voice, no, your voice, extensions of life in unusual circumstances. Uh, one spouse stereo, so you can have the cloning or homosexual marriage between them kung halimbawa puro sila uh, mga babae or mga lalaki. So you, they can do the homosexual, I, I mean the clone, human clone, no? So, eh, magka, so magkamukha sa kanilang two male parents. So positive points naman ng therapeutic cloning include clone embryos provide brain cells for disorders like the Parkinson and Alzheimer's disease. So these are very, very uh, familiar diseases, no? which can be cured through therapeutic cloning and pancreatic islet cells for diabetes. So there are actually positive points on therapeutic cloning. Nerve cells for spinal cord damage. So, pag na-damage yung spinal cord mo, it's either gulay ka na or patay, no? So, blood and bone marrow cells for blood cell disorder is very important also, no? And the use of stem cells to generate clones. So, uh, we have, I know, I don't know if you have heard stem cell technology. So, using our stem cells to, um, to cure diseases, no, it's very possible nowadays. So, so this is the uh, embryonic stem cells, no, on how to generate them using in in petri dish, and the from the different adult stem cells. So this is how they actually um, create the embryo through in vitro fertilization, no. So at claro naman sa uh, figure, no, the, the different sequence. So I will not, since, since we are now less than a minute, so I will not discuss further. So why not perform reproductive cloning? So sometimes eugenic or to maximize certain traits intentionally. So um, that could be very risky and reduce genetic diversity. So you substitute for organ and clone may have reduced life expectancy 
and may also be abnormal. And lack of self-identity. You can be replaceable later. No, kung nanay kloin sa Maika o sa Lovely or sa Lira and dominated by the father or mother. And uh, usually, traditionally, family relationship, twin of the cell donor or relationship with its brothers and sister or spouse of the cell donor. So we have the so-called human reproductive technology bill in 2000, wherein you don't allow replace nucleus of an embryo with nucleus of another cell. Loan an embryo or trading of embryo is prohibited. So in China naman, it's, it's prohibited, no? All of this. So these are just uh, uh, um, some sort of news which are found on, on the internet and recent development and human cloning. They claim that they have given birth to Eve on December 26, 2002 and also Dutch Lisbon Human early in January 2003. 